we confuse strength and weakness. We think that we are weak and that we're powerless. And we think because we're weak and powerless, we try to get power by attacking, by being treacherous to each other. This idea that if you're strong and you've got how strong you actually are, there's no need to prove or win your strength from anyone or anything. And you have no reason to show it or, you know, act out in a way that gains you power. And also no need to try to be big because you already are. But most people are striving for bigness, right? However that looks to them, money, prestige, power, position, material things, trying to get bigger. And I relate to this. We all have it, right? But there's another way to be. And that way is to look for what's big within already. Look for the truth. And as you, as we become aware of the truth, the external reflects that. You don't have to chase it or go get it. You know, people who really get who they are, there's not a lot of effort need to be made for the world to mirror that. Whatever they need, they have, you know, whatever power they need to access in what seems the external, be the external world, shows up. They don't have to go get it. It's just sort of unfolds because it's reflecting them. So most of us are not being about that. We're completely reversed, right? We feel small. We feel lacking. And mostly what it is, we feel we lack love. And love is our true power. We think we lack and we're trying to get it from out there. And that that will empower us, make us big. What gives us our strength is our unity, right? are seeing ourselves as one with everyone and everything. And we're, we have it backwards. We think we gain our strength by separating ourselves out and then taking power from others. That actually weakens us. So the strong do not attack because they see no need to, dis, to do so. Before the idea of attack can enter your mind, you must have perceived yourself as weak because you attacked yourself and believed that the attack was effective. You behold yourself as weakened because you attack yourself and believe that the attack was effective. You behold yourself as weakened. And so no longer perceiving yourself and your brothers as equal and regarding yourself as weaker, you attempt to equalize the situation that you made. You use attack to do so because you believe that attack was successful in weakening you. And the attack is the self-attack that weakens us. That is why the recognition of your own invulnerability is so important to the restoration of your sanity. Do I desire a world where I am powerful instead of helpless? Do I desire a world in which I have no enemies and cannot sin? And do I want to see what I denied because it is the truth? So saying what we've denied, you know, it's asking, do you actually want to see what you shut out believing that you're helpless instead. And it says, you may have already answered the first three questions, but not yet the last. So, I mean, most people say, do I desire a world where I rule instead of one that rules me? Yeah, sure, I desire that. Do I desire a world where I am powerful instead of helpless? You could say yes to that. Do I desire a world in which I have no enemies and cannot sin? Yeah, but then do I want to see what I denied because it is truth? Now, the reason it's saying we probably haven't answered that one yet, because if you could say yes to that, you would probably see it. And what you've denied or what we've denied is the truth of ourselves. And to the ego, that feels very threatening. So it says, you may have already answered the first three, but not like the last. For this one still seems fearful and unlike the others. Yet reason would assure you they are all the same. We said, yet we said this year would emphasize the sameness of things that are the same. And this is what we don't want to see. We don't want to see that we're the same. That's the thing that's treacherous to, to the ego. We're the same. There's nobody greater, nobody lesser, right? We're the same. Um, <clears throat> this final question, which is indeed the last you need to side, still seems to hold a threat the rest have lost for you. <clears throat> and this imagined difference attests to your belief that the truth may be the enemy you yet may find. This is interesting, right? It's hard to fully get what it's saying, but... We're making the truth our enemy. And the truth is that we're all the same. We're all equally powerful and unlimited in our power together. And the ego makes this its enemy. This truth is the enemy. We don't want to know it. 
because to have that truth show up means you have to give up the whole story, right? The whole thing, all of it, how they wronged you, harmed you, took it from you, did it to you, all that stuff. You have to give up. And we I, that's our identity. We identify with that story. So it's a threat to the ego. The ego dies in the truth, but you don't, right? I don't, we don't. We get to be born anew, realize the truth of ourselves. But from the perspective of being an ego, it feels like death. 